Okay, let's kick this off. Uh, I'd say good afternoon, everyone, but I know we have folks that are in evening and morning, so good day, everyone. My name is Susan Perkins. I am the Martin and Michelle Cohen Dean of Science at City College of New York, and it is my great, great pleasure to welcome you all to today's Division of Science Distinguished Alumni Award presentation being held in our first ever Week of Science. So many and hopefully most of you know that City College is a very special place. And though I've only been here for a year, I am continuously and increasingly impressed with this institution. Our faculty are impressive scholars and researchers, as well as dedicated educators. Our students come from all over the city, the region, and even the world. And in our classrooms and our laboratories, they are transformed through courses, research experiences, and other interactions with the people of this institution to become individuals ready for the next steps in careers in science, mathematics, medicine, or whatever they choose. It is notably special then to be able to bring some of our former students back and see how far they went. And today's uh, awardees went extremely far uh, from that launching pad on Convent Avenue. So this series of distinguished alumni of the Division of Science that I established this year it's just one way that we can continue to celebrate our traditions, our values, our hard work, and our successes. And today we are extremely proud to celebrate three amazing graduates of the college who are legends in mathematics. Each of them is in his sixth decade of working in these fields and making valuable contributions. So before I turn the mic, or I guess in this case, the screen over to the president of City College, Dr. Vincent Boudreau, I just wanna thank a few people. Uh, the office staff and the Dean's office are always very helpful putting these events together. So Laurel Mars, Elizabeth Rudolph, Cindy Gonzalez and Frank Pace in particular. And then as always, I wanna thank Anthony Achille who is so helpful with getting our webinars set up. So President Boudreau, the stage is yours. Thank you, Dean Perkins. I'm really thrilled uh, to be here today, uh, really looking forward to, to hearing Dr. Allman, Dr. Chernoff, and Dr. Davis. But I wanna just say something about um, this series certainly, but it's positioning within the week of science. Uh, four years ago, when I became president of City College, uh, one of the projects that we wanted to inaugurate was a day of science. Um, we, we uh, uh, and there's a reason for that. You know, it, many of you know, I've, I've been at City College. This is now my 30th year at City College. And, and uh, over the, the, the course of those decades, I have been you know, unremittingly proud of my association with this institution for the work that we do at the institution, but also a little disappointed periodically at the way we described our success. We described our success very, very often. Many of you remember, and some still see, the posters on, on buses and subways, where we talked about individual students and their immediate accomplishment, oftentimes in ways that seemed divorced from the larger context of the institution. And, and the day of science in, in my thinking uh, was an opportunity to bring the world into our laboratories, into our classrooms, into our studios, and, and think about the organic connection between you know, why our students are so successful? What kinds of intellectual and research contributions emanate from our labs? Um, people, when they leave City College and, and go off into the field. And that, you can't tell the story of this institution without talking about, in the same way, the, the, the kinds of intellectual activity that a student encounters when she comes to campus and she works in the lab. The life of those discoveries and contributions when they leave a classroom or laboratory and operate out in the world and the contributions that our alumni make when they, when they, when they leave CCNY and embark upon um, profoundly in many, many cases. Um, uh, certainly uh, today's three honorees are examples, profoundly impactful careers in, in their field. Um, and and, and f as I think of the project of the day of science, the now week of science, and, and the way that we have been urging our community to talk about City College, I think of it in terms of, 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 of two things. 
Uh, the first is exploding the myth that there is any distinction between the old city college and the contemporary city college. We are the same institution we have always been. We are today um, producing social mobility among our graduates at a pace unrivaled by any institution uh, in the country except for uh, what our honorees will remember as City College Downtown, now known as Baruch College, a sadly independent entity from CCNY. Um, but we are also making uh, an economic impact uh, that is uh, astounding. Every year, a recent economic impact study that we made last year uh, suggests that we are contributing $1.9 billion every year to the economy merely of the 10 contiguous counties around CCNY. And so you put those two things together. Tremendous impact economically, socially, in terms of the, the, the trajectories of the disciplines in which we educate our students. Tremendous impact being made by drawing in young men and women who don't come to City College with a lot of wealth or opportunity or resources. And via their interaction with our institution, they achieve this, this, this nation leading social mobility, right? At a time when social mobility really doesn't exist broadly in our country, the combination of, of tremendous social mobility and vast economic, but I would also say intellectual, cultural, social impact, that's the mission of our college. It was the mission of our college in 1847. It continues to be the mission today, every bit as much today as in um, the 40s and 50s and the 30s and the 20s. And there is no better way of illustrating the connection between past and present um, than by bringing um, some of our very most distinguished alumni to campus to talk about their work and, and, and to, in that visit, re generate that connection between past and present. So I'm, I'm, I'm tremendously grateful that the day of science has become a week of science. I, I'd like to applaud Dean Perkins insight for embedding into that general effort, this series of honoring distinguished alumni. I wanna offer my congratulations to all three of today's honorees and I wanna get out of the way so we can listen to them talk. Congratulations, gentlemen. Dean Perkins, back to you. Thank you so much, President Boudreau. I'm just going to now introduce our moderator of today's conversation, Dr. Ethan Aiken. Dr. Aiken has been with us as a professor in the math department since 1970, teaching and researching in topological dynamics, mathematical applications to population genetics, and other interesting questions. And as you'll soon see, he's also beloved for his fantastic sense of humor. Let me invite all of today's participants in our webinar to post any questions you may have at any time using the Q&A button that you'll see at the bottom of your Zoom window. Dr. Aiken, please take it away. Okay, so I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to describe for you what our plans are. Uh, I'll do a brief introduction for each of our speakers and then they will take it away. And then after that, uh, uh, I'll ask a few follow-up questions, and then we'll, we'll open things up so that uh, you, the, uh, part the, the audience, uh, they call them attendees, uh, uh, can, can ask questions in Q&A. So I'd like to begin by introducing Dr. Robert J. Allman. Robert J. Allman was born in Germany in 1930. His family got out in 1938, which was quite late, although my mother and father only left in 1939. His people settled in New York and he graduated from City College in 1950. His early interests and PhD work were in pure math areas like analysis and knot theory. But while working at the Forrestal Center in Princeton, he became interested in game theory. Thus, from the beginning, his interest in game theory was linked to problems of conflict in what we laughably call the real world. Uh, I was introduced uh, to his work with Moshler uh, on bargaining sets by my colleague, Morton Davis, who himself wrote a lovely non-technical introduction to game theory. Allman has become arguably the greatest name in game theory and the extent and depth of his work led to the Nobel Prize in, in 2005. I'm happy to be meeting him, even if only virtually, and I'm proud to be introducing him. So, Dr. Allman. 
Well, thank you uh, very much for that uh, uh, nice introduction. And uh, thank you even more the, the City College the Institution. Um, well, it's uh, 16 to eight. Okay, uh, for, for uh, giving um, me and Dr. Davis and Dr. Chernoff uh, the uh, Distinguished um, Alumni Award, Alumnus Award. Uh, we are very uh, proud to get this award, to be a, a, a distinguished alumnus of uh, City College. And uh, I'm brought back to the days uh, when, when we were uh, studying in City College. Um, it's a long time ago. I uh, myself was there from uh, January of 47 to, uh, to uh, June of 1950, uh, three and a half years. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I remember the atmosphere uh, at uh, City College. I mean, it really, uh, it really shaped me, uh, it shaped my career. I, I, I had a wonderful teacher of um, mathematics in, uh, in high school, so I decided to major in mathematics. And uh, this was, it was uh, a, a, a good faculty. There were, no, there were no research mathematicians at the time uh, at City College in the faculty, except for one very prominent uh, research mathematician by the same by the name of Emil Post, and uh, I'll have a few words to say about the kind of course he gave, the kind of uh, teaching he gave. But the I think the the main thing was a really unusual collection of students, and we had a uh, a table or two tables actually in the back of the enormous cafeteria. And those uh, two tables uh, were right opposite. Uh, I think at some point they introduced an ice cream uh, stand right uh, uh, with, uh, within five or 10 yards of the two tables. But those were the math tables. And, uh, and people really into math would come and every free moment and uh, shoot, shoot problems around and play chess for nickels, nickels. Yes, we played chess for nickels for five cents. And five cents was money at the time. The New York Times, the New York Times cost three cents, three cents, okay. Uh, so five cents was money. And we played chess for nickels and we played with some of the best chess players, although they were not in the math department. The best chess players were not. But the, I think there was once a champion, a, a United States champion, who was there studying at uh, uh, City College. And some of the names, they were very prominent mathematicians. One of them, of course, perhaps the most prominent was Martin Davis. Uh, um, uh, or is Martin Davis, the, the most prominent graduate of those, uh, of that, uh, of the math table is, is Martin Davis, but there were others. There, were, there was DJ Newman, Martin, is DJ uh, alive still? No, I think Donald Davis. died. He died. Uh, um, yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. He, he was ill the last time I heard from him, he was quite ill. Um, and uh, he was an amazing problem solver. And uh, there was Linear, what was his first name, Martin? Sam. And, and there was Mel Hendrickson, there was Paul Shields, uh, uh, there was, let me see if I, <clears throat> um, there was uh, Leo Flatto, uh, and uh, there was, uh, as I, I was saying, there was a, 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 a good, uh, and there was Jack Schwartz, did I mention Jack Schwartz? Famous mathematician, Dunford Schwartz, and, and, uh, uh, a very uh, fundamental um, uh, text in in uh, in uh, Banach spaces and so on in that area. Uh, now um, 
so, so this was an amazing place to learn. And we had, we had these honors courses. Honors courses were courses for like uh, one, two, or three students, up to three of the best students of the math table students would uh, take these honors courses. And I remember I would uh, participate, uh, participate in several of them. And, um, and sometimes I was alone, the only student. So I had to speak, the, the, the teachers didn't speak at these, uh, at these courses. The lectures were given or the, the talks were given by the students. Uh, so uh, I, when you're alone in these courses, you talk every week. Uh, there was, uh, in addition to post, the names I remember were uh, 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 Gill, who was the treasurer of the, of the American Mathematical Society, and there was a Hurwitz. Those are the names I remember on, on, on the faculty. I was saying, post, you, in post lectures, he didn't give lectures. He used the Moore method. He used that in every, uh, 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 at, in, in every uh, class assignment, he would give out problems. He would say what, what problems the, uh, the uh, students had to solve. And in the next uh, class, the he would say who solved these problems and the students who solved them would raise their hands and they would write the solutions on the blackboard. And that was how the whole course was, uh, was developed. This was a course in, uh, um, uh, uh, the theory of functions of a real variable, the uh, uh, big integration, and so on and so forth. So that was uh, that was the the math milieu, and it was just great. Now uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the more general milieu, um, uh, and there was uh, there was some uh, great things going on there. We had a championship basketball team in the in the in the late forties. Okay, a championship basketball team, and they won the nationwide, the nationwide uh, uh, all the awards nationwide, the NCAA or other things I forgot already. Yes, but but and then a year later. This came falling down in a crash with uh, uh, with revelations mm -hmm. of bribery and and uh, uh, taking money for throwing a game and uh, uh, and so on. So th this was uh, this was um, this was great, and then it crashed. Okay, but the the basketball players were great anyway. Yes, never mind the. Uh, Never mind the scandals. Uh, now, another thing that I remember was there was a uh, virulently anti-Semitic professor of uh, Romance languages. I've forgotten his name also, but there was a strike of the student to somehow discipline him. And there was a, a viral, not virulently anti-Black instructor and another thing that was also a strike against him. Uh, so uh, these were lively days and the New York Times, it has changed its color a little bit. The New York Times described the striking, the striking students as communists, okay? Now communist was a no, no, no word of those days, okay? And uh, the students sued the New York Times and they won $500,000 from, $500,000 was money, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and, and that was money. It's not like today. Five, you have to multiply by a factor of 30 or so, yes? We're talking about $150,000 uh, or something like that. No, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 30, wait a minute, I'm not too good at math. 30 times, uh, 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 30 times 500, Three times five hundred is fifteen hundred. So we're talking about fifteen thousand. So we're talking about fifteen million dollars. He, he got a he got some he got a decision of fifteen million dollars after suing the New York Times. All right. Uh, so uh, that's uh, that's it. But uh, now I'd like to end my remarks with a with a bombshell. Okay. Uh, talking about the general uh, picture at City College in those years. 
in you know, the, 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 this, the, these things are unthinkable nowadays. Uh, the, the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences did not admit women, okay? The, the, uh, the uh, School of Education admitted women, the School of Engineering admitted women, but the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, when I was studying between 47 and 50, did not admit women. And in 1948, I think, either 48 or early 49, I don't remember exactly, in 48 or 49, there was a suggestion made to admit women to the College of Liberal Arts and Science, uh, Sciences. And this went through the administration of the university, the president, the, all the, the whole administration, and it passed, they said, Okay, we're going to admit women, but we want to take a vote of the students first. We want the students to approve before we, and the students voted it down. They voted no. Okay? <laughs> so at that point, women were not, you, you, you know, uh, uh, Dean Perkins, we've come a long way, baby. Okay, <laughs> go to the end of my remarks. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> That's great. Okay, next, we'd like to turn to uh, Dr. Herman Chernoff. Now, statistics is an area which requires subtly different skills and intuitions than are used in many other parts of mathematics. I discovered this myself when I was recently drafted to teach the first course in mathematical statistics. And Herman Chernoff is one of the masters of these skills as displayed in his valuable book on sequential analysis and optimal design. Born in 1923, Chernoff graduated from City College in 1943. The war kept interrupting his graduate study, but by the time he received his PhD in 1948, he'd studied with R.A. Fisher, William Feller, and Abraham Wald, who became his thesis advisor. His continuing work in statistics was recognized via several honorary doctorates, and he's a member of the National Academy of Sciences and an, ignore, an, an inaugural fellow of the American Mathematical Society. I'm pleased and honored to be introducing someone who graduated from City College three years before I was born. <laughs> Dr. Chernoff. Uh, it's a pleasure to get this uh, honorary degree uh, or uh, honor. And when I went to City College, a girl had been admitted. So uh, I think there had been some interaction before, between the time I uh, entered City College and uh, the students decided to keep women out of City College. But uh, they, uh, the, the, the college had women. And uh, my experience at City College, I was very young and uh, I didn't take full advantage of City College. I uh, traveled uh, by subway and the subway ride cost five cents at that time. And uh, uh, I came back by another five cents was spent. So I had to spend 10 cents every time I went to City College. Uh, and I found that the, uh, the faculty there that had a big impact on me were Gil were, and uh, of course uh, Post and uh, starkly enough, uh, Selby Robinson who taught statistics. Now, uh, uh, I won't describe Post because I think Davis can say more about it. Post than I can, but he taught a course in real variables based on Townsend, and uh, he complained that Townsend had a lot of mistakes in it, and it was the function of the classes to find the errors in this, and by the time my class reached uh, the real variable course, there were about 15 pages of corrections, and my class actually added two more corrections to that list. Uh, but uh, 
Gil was uh, a very unusual, had an unusual uh, way of uh, grading the students. He would give the problems. No one lectured in the math department at that time. They had the students present their results. And uh, what he did was he assigned homework problems and he had the students indicate whether they had done the problem, in which case they got two points, or whether they could do the problem but hadn't done it, in which case they got one point or that it was too difficult for them, in which case they got minus two points. But when a student was supposed to present his solution, if he got it wrong, he had minus 20 points. And one of my colleagues then, Maya Jarrison, uh, had started off the class with two minus 20 points and had to work pretty hard to make up for that difficulty. But one of my uh, teachers who had a big impact on me was Selby Robinson, who taught a statistics course that I found quite uninteresting until one day he decided that he had to uh, skip a class. And so he gave us all papers to read, papers in various journals. And uh, I had a paper by Naaman and Pearson. And this paper had a strange statement. It was important in testing a hypothesis to decide what are the alternatives that you have to consider. And uh, to me, that seemed sort of obvious. It didn't seem like a, a great idea, but in fact, it was, uh, earth shattering. It, philosophically, it was a new way to look at testing hypotheses, which was an important part of statistics. Later on in graduate school, I happened to take a reading course in statistics from Henry Mann, who was a number theorist who happened to be working in statistics also. And uh, he showed me a paper by Wald in which Wald connected both testing hypotheses and estimation to classical methods and statistics in one uniform criterion. And he introduced the uh, issue that we have to consider what are the consequences of whatever decision we're gonna make based on analyzing the data. Now, this was the first paper on decision theory, which became a well-known field. In fact, decision theory is really game theory where you're playing games against nature. You don't know what nature is gonna do, but you have a strategy. And uh, when I read that paper, I decided that I would convert to statistics and I, chose to write my thesis in absentia at Columbia University under Professor Wald, who was an outstanding statistician whose life was cut short shortly afterwards. I, at that time, I was pretty young and I had to come home after classes to work in my parents' grocery store and so I didn't have much of a social life. So even though there were a few women who were admitted to City College at that time, uh, I never saw any of them. And uh, we had lunch in those days in the basement of the main building of City College, which is full of alcoves in each alcove, there was a ping pong table. And I was not a great ping pong player, but it was an opportunity to discuss the subjects that we were interested in. So mathematicians and I would generally have discussions there. And we found at that time that uh, 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 communism was 
not quite unacceptable. It was a, 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 a possible subject. And that was popular among many people who were mathematicians at that time. Uh, I don't know about the faculty at City College. I think the historians were uh, uh, perhaps touched by it. But uh, MIT, where I spent some time later on, had been the home of some communists. And at City College, the uh, communists were very much troubled by a difficulty that came up. How do you reconcile the fact that Stalin and Hitler had made a pact? That seemed uh, unbelievable at the time, but the, some of the communists found a way to rationalize them. Anyway, uh, I found that my background at City College was very outstanding. When I went to graduate school, there was no comparison between the kind of background that I had and the background that other people who had graduated from colleges had. I missed the fact that we hadn't had a, a university there because then I could have seen what was going on in the more advanced courses in the university, but I, I missed them, but that was life. I think uh, uh, I can make room for the next speaker then. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Chernoff, that was great. And I think, I assume that the uh, the room that both of you described, that that was the cafeteria in Shepherd Hall. Yeah. And if so, and if so, that it was famous also for having various political tables, like the, there was a communist table and then the Trotsky table. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there was still, I was still eating in the cafeteria at Shepherd Hall in the 60s. Okay, so our, our last speaker today is uh, uh, Dr. Martin Davis. Born in 1928, Martin Davis is a member of the EPIC 1948 class, which as you've already mentioned, included Donald Newman and Jack Schwartz. And at City College, he studied with the great logician Emil Post and the, what he who de described as the inspiring teacher, Bennington Pennington Gill, who was still inspiring, I should say, when I took number theory with him in 1963. Uh, his early work in logic is summarized in his beautiful book, Computability and Unsolvability. My own copy is the 1958 edition, and so it does not include the appendix with his exposition of Hilbert's 10th problem, which was in some of the reprints. That prize-winning paper described the work by him and others, which finally led to solution of the problem. After 30 years at NYU, uh, Davis retired and moved to Berkeley. The fruit of his so-called retirement is the wonderful historical survey, The Universal Computer. And again, it's a joy to be doing the introduction for it, Professor Davis. Thank you. Uh, the uh, president, uh, uh, first of all, I'm really very grateful to be receiving this award. I, I, uh, there really have been so many outstanding graduates of City College and uh, you, you find mathematicians who started out at CCNY at practically every major university in the United States. And to be one of three people singled out in this way is more of an honor than I think I deserve. But I'm very happy to receive it. The, I, I'm really a model for uh, social mobility that was mentioned by the president's an initial address. Um, my, uh, my parents were Polish Jewish immigrants uh, and during the depression years, uh, we were as poor as could be. We were, part, at least part of the time, we, we were receiving uh, what would be called uh, welfare uh, in more recent years. It was called home relief. 
and uh, my my mother was just acutely embarrassed to be in this position and didn't want others to know that she was uh, taking money from from the government. Uh, the fact that City College was absolutely free. There was no tuition to pay. We had to to buy our textbooks and we had to pay uh, some minimal student fee for uh, student activities. But otherwise, it, it was free. Um, man, man, we could afford it. Um, so I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, Bob Auman mentioned the, the math table. I, I think I learned as much mathematics at the math table as I did in the classroom. I mean, there was always a hubbub of people talking, talking about, uh, about things. Um, of course, my, uh, my association with, with Post uh, was, uh, I was, uh, how shall I put this? I was associated with Post to a later, uh, to a greater extent than the other two speakers because I basically uh, was his student and my work my, my dissertation is in considerable part uh, based on his ideas uh, and not only on the subject matter, but on his way of looking at the, at, at, at the subject matter. So I, I, I was in the happy situation of, of, of when I was working on my dissertation at Princeton of of having the uh, of having in my background uh, Post's work, uh, Claney's work, Stephen Claney that Post really introduced me to, and Alonzo Church at Princeton, who was my dissertation advisor. I really, really, all three of them were there in 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 my dissertation, but especially Post. If, if uh, CCNY had had a uh, PhD program in those years, I, I sure, or surely would have gone on with Post as my, my advisor. Uh, I want to say uh, a little bit about Post and re real his Math 34, a real variable theory. Oh, that, still the same uh, number. Pardon me. Still, oh, I'm sorry. It was still the same number when I was there. Yeah. Um, the, the there was this textbook by Townsend, which was an incredible sloppy mess of a textbook <laughs> on a subject that really, really required very serious rigor and care to detail. Uh, the notes that uh, Post supplied as a as a um, corrective. Uh, my recollection is not fifteen pages, but forty pages of forty pages of of, of notes. Uh, my experience with that course was was unique. It was, um, I entered City College in 1944 when uh, World War II was raging. And uh, real variable, th the, there was a, uh, an STP program on the campus in which, uh, in which soldiers were getting advanced training and there just weren't the resources to teach advanced courses. So Math 34 wasn't to be given. A group of us went to see Post and asked him whether he wouldn't offer it as a special honors course. 
And so he did. Now, you have to know that in those days, the teaching load was 16 hours a week. And he took this on, uh, and, you know, without any extra pay for it. Uh, it gave his free time for meeting once a week. And that was an amazing, an, 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 ama an amazing experience. If you survived that course, you could survive <laughs> anything. I mean, the, the oral exam at Princeton was nothing compared to that course, we would go home with an assignment of a certain number of pages. And then when we met, he would call on us. We had no idea in advance in what order and which topics. And he would, he would uh, call on you to recite what was in pages 87 to 89 or some such thing. You'd go to the blackboard, couldn't, weren't allowed to bring the book with you, and you had to stand at the board and explain in detail, giving all the proofs. And, and, and I, I still remember my acute embarrassment at one point when I confused a least upper bound with a value actually assuming, assumed by a function. Uh, I still blush when I think of, 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 of how personally hurt Post was that I had made such a silly blunder. Um, if you didn't get an ulcer in that course, you would never get an ulcer. Um, the, um, about Gill, I have to say that, that he, he was really a charismatic teacher. He, he would wander off topic talk about all sorts of sorts sort of uh, sorts of things and uh, I I had him in the classroom a lot more than I actually did post but I, I had the benefit of many direct personal conversations with post he gave me a set of his reprints and uh, we talked about possible topics he, his idea was that if I wanted to get into a good graduate school, I should do some research first. Well, I didn't really do anything of that sort, but uh, I did start thinking about things. In fact, I, 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 I took uh, the advanced logic course in uh, the philosophy department and the, I handed in a term paper in that course which in a way was a first draft of my dissertation, of or at least of a, of a, of a, a part of, of a part of, of, of my dissertation. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm, I, I think I'm close to running out of time. I'd like to uh, conclude by saying a little more about that incredible math table. Uh, Chess was mentioned. Well, it, it wasn't clock check chess. Ten, ten second chess was very popular. You had ten seconds, and by the time it got to be nine seconds, the, everyone in the table would be shouting, "Move, move, move!" move. Uh, and. The other thing is uh, about it is the incredible hubbub. I mean, there were people. Uh, one of the things that I that that I had to learn at Princeton was that when you lectured, you weren't supposed to shout, uh, <laughs> and uh, that, that that's a whole other story. But. Uh, 
it, it was a, just everybody was talking and it was it was not a whisper and somehow one managed to absorb mathematics in that in that atmosphere I, <laughs> I, I i find it amazing i i have one of my honors papers uh, on, on what came to be called Banach algebras that were, were called normed rings and Gelfand's papers. There were only Gelfand's papers to look at. I look at that honors paper and think that this was something written by an undergraduate. It looks like a professional piece of mathematical exposition. I had a wonderful mathematical education at City College. I'll stop with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just, before asking some questions, I just wanted to say that Selby Robinson, Ben Gill, and Solomon Hurwitz were still teaching at City College in the 60s uh, when I went there. And I had courses, and I had a course with Gill, although not with the other two. And the other is, uh, we heard uh, uh, at Princeton, that kind of chess, they used to call it blitz. You know, the, uh, and I remember, move, 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 right. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, there were a couple of other professors who uh, were still around when I was at school and uh, who even continued when I returned to teach at City. And I think some of them may have overlapped with you folks. As a young instructor, Abraham Schwartz, do any of you remember him? I do, yes. Uh, right. I know him particularly because my wife took his calculus class and came home from class raving about what a wonderful teacher he was. Right, right. And a, and a really sweet man. And he wrote a book, which uh, we don't use anymore. Which uh, And then the other was, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Sherburn Barber. Very yeah. tall, gangly. He may have arrived right around then. I remember him, sure. Right, right. Yeah. Sherburn Barber lived to the age of 101, <laughs> dying wow. uh, just a few years ago. And, and I wanted to ask about the, about the Moore method. Oh, yes. Oh, the other is that Leo Flato has still been teaching at uh, City College. He's been teaching as an adjunct. And uh, so I, I still see him, you know, well, I saw him the last time that we were uh, on did you, know, did you know Herman Cohn? Oh, yes, of course, Herman he, Cohn. He was, he was a classmate of mine, and uh, he was at Brown at the same time I was there. Oh, wow, right, right. I have one of his reprints. In fact, uh, I took his uh, his general topology class in the in my, my first year and fell in love with it, and I began reading out of Kelly. By the way, I had Math 34, but we used a good, uh, you know, uh, Kalmogorov and Foman's volume two, a very thin little book, but very good. Mm -hmm. And Leo, I wanted to, pardon? Leo Flato is still teaching at City? Uh, yes, yeah. I, I think he may have stopped, but if so, just a year or so ago. We were for many, many years, you know, he and I were together in high school and then together at City College, and then together at MIT, and we kept up our friendship for many, many, many years. And still, when he comes to Israel, we meet. Uh, please give him my very, very best regards, okay? I will. I will. I wanted to ask about the Moore method that you described. Now, the uh, uh, Dr. Davis's description is a little bit different. The standard version of Moore method that uh, Dr. Almond gave, uh, that people would say they can, they've can they solved this problem and get up and give it. Now, I've heard that the way the Moore method worked is if you hadn't yet solved the problem, then when somebody stood up to give it, you left the room. Was that true with uh, the way he did it? I don't think so. No, no, no. I, I don't, don't know. that. You know, it could be true. My memory is very poor. Yes, you know, I'm getting uh, along in years, okay? So uh, uh, my memory is very poor, but no, I don't think they did it that way. Uh, they posted it that way in, in, the, in Math 34 and uh, Real Variables. Uh, right. Uh, um, I'd like to interrupt briefly. There was something that I forgot to mention. 
when I was teaching in the statistics department at Stanford University, in which I spent a lot of years and it's a good department, the students found a copy of the yearbook of 1938. And they posted a picture of the math club. And in this math club, it's, well, the sign of, of that picture was know your faculty. There were four of us in that picture. There was a fifth who was busy having a piece of pie somewhere else. And so he skipped the picture. But in addition to me, there was Kenneth Arrow, who's a Nobel laureate. Right. And uh, there was Harvey Cohn and uh, Westler and uh, Proshan, who were people in that picture. Harvey Cohn taught at City for a while, and yeah. and I think Almond graduated from City. Uh, not uh, not Almond, uh, uh, Arrow. I think also graduated. Oh, Arrow graduated. He graduated when I came there. He, oh. he unfortunately died a couple of years ago. He, he was in his nineties. Right. That's uh, that's great. I, and, I think uh, he was ninety-five. Uh, he died at the age of ninety-five. I think. Right. Well, I, wait. We can we can hope that mathematics is something which keeps one alive a long time, although some some cases not. Uh, let me see if uh, other folks, uh, some of the uh, uh, part attendees or participants or attendees have questions. There's a uh, Q and A here. Uh, oh yeah, uh, was the house plan uh, uh, there in uh, back in in your day? There was a house plan, but I, I was out of it. A house plan? Because yeah, a house plan was something like a, a fraternity. It was the city college version of a fraternity. It was called house plan. I wasn't in it either, but it still existed uh, in the 60s. Well, I think most, most people lived at home, yes. I mean, oh, no, 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 you didn't good. stay there. It was just a social thing. A social thing, oh. Uh, get together, sort oh, of. Yeah. I, I was yeah, not aware yeah. of its of the existence of such a thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it, but it's true. What what uh, what uh, Dr. Davis uh, said about uh, extreme poverty. Uh, uh, we we came from Germany in '38, like uh, like you say, uh, Dr. Uh, Aiken, uh, uh, and and. Uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, passage from Germany to the United States, uh, we my family my family lost all his mother, and uh, we had to work very hard. My mother held down three jobs. My father held down two jobs. Uh, but uh, we we really uh, they gave their two children a wonderful education, and that is yeah that's right that that city culture is free, absolutely free. That is a big big. Uh, uh, well, oh, yeah. I think it's no longer so, right? No, you're right. It was still free in the '60s when I was there, and that was wonderful. And uh, I, I guess uh, it was during the '70s there was one of the many financial crises of New York City that they introduced tuition. And it became clear that the distance between zero and epsilon was much greater than the distance between epsilon and infinity. As soon as tuition started, it began to move up. And uh, it's, it's very sad in that respect. Let's see, some of the others, uh, uh, one of the other, oh yeah. I just wanted to, uh, we will continue to take questions, but just, um, since we're coming up on 1.30 and, I, and some people might need to leave, I just wanted to pause for one minute and just share uh, again that, that it is my extremely great honor to be able to present these Distinguished Alumni Awards to the three of you. Um, I came to City College because I was so inspired by the current day students that I met, but it's been an absolute treat getting to meet some of the former students uh, and I love hearing the stories, uh, you know, both of the college, but as well as of New York City. Um, it's my it's my new adopted home, and it's just wonderful to hear this. So, as I mentioned, we have awards that physical awards that will be on their way to you very soon. 
Um, and I hope I hope we'll see them on your bookshelves as as we go along. So once again, from from myself, congratulations, um, and we're just so honored to to have you join us here uh, today. So. As I said, I, I'm happy to take more questions, but I just wanted to, to pause and, and give that acknowledgement in case some of our guests do need to run off to another Zoom meeting, no doubt. Right. Um, but go ahead, Ethan. Um, okay, yeah, let's see. Someone else asked if there were many African-American Latinos or Asians in your classes. I, I remember yeah, African-Americans, uh, absolutely. They were African-Americans and I even mentioned that there was a, 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 a big problem with one of the instructors who made uh, remarks uh, uh, derogatory of African-Americans uh, and uh, the students went on strike. This and the anti-Semitism, but I think the Afri the, uh, I, both, both of those played a big role. So there were African-Americans there uh, I would say uh, quite a few, quite a few. I would say, um, I don't know, uh, uh, a, a lot, uh, 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 two, three percent of African Americans, I would say, at least, at least. Uh, it, was a, it was a big, uh, there were many students. I remember in my graduating class, there were a 2,000, at the graduating ceremony in Lewiston Stadium, there were 2,000 graduates. I didn't go. <laughs> I, I picked up my diploma afterwards. And you know what they said about the uh, five cents? By the time I was at City, the subway cost 10 cents. And they said, with a diploma from the college and 10 cents, you can get into the subway. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. All right. Um, oh, uh, someone is asking, uh, uh, what are the books behind uh, 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 behind you, Dr. Okay. Arlen's? Pardon? Yeah, that, that is the Talmud. Ah. The, the Babylonian ah. Talmud, okay? which I study regularly. So you see that they, they're not in such good condition because I've had this Talmud for uh, 60 years, okay? And I've been studying it and, uh, and uh, uh, that's it, yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's uh, what, yeah. So the, the bindings are not in such great shape. Now, in a related, uh, someone is uh, asking that Alan Dershowitz uh, described the finest achievement in Brooklyn College was to establish house plans for Orthodox Jews that had their parties on Sunday afternoon rather than Friday night. And yeah. um, now uh, there was a Hillel organization when I was there. Was Hillel, uh, did Hillel as a student organization exist for any of you? I don't remember. No, no not not at uh, not at City College. It was right. a hill at the, the, not even at. I went to MIT, but we used to go to the Harvard Hill. Yes, we we uh, right. uh, we we did uh, go. We did uh, interact with the Harvard Hill. Uh, now MIT I, has a, its own Hill also. MIT ha does have its own Hill. Yeah. At that time, no, there was no Hill at MIT. So let's see, my, my colleague Bianca Santoro is asking a difficult question. Are there any classes at CCNY which any of the speakers regretted taking? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I regretted taking biology, n uh, though I didn't have a choice. It was required for my degree and uh, not being a very visual person and ha and having to deal with these practicums where you had to recognize what you saw under the microscope, I did rather poorly and I, I, I failed biology one and had to repeat it. So that was a, that, that was not an experience that I, that I particularly enjoy. I think one of the things that was, uh, one of the factors that was operating there was a, 
a political one. There were many, there, there, there were many young Jewish students who wanted to be doctors. Uh, you know, my parents certainly wanted me to be a doctor. They were convinced that mathematics would end up with me starving in a garret somewhere. <laughs> um, and they, the, uh, bi the biology faculty, I think, thought it was part of their duty, given the obstacles that these uh, young people would face to make this course tough enough so they would recognize whether they really had the ability to surmount the obstacles. And I got in the way. <laughs> See, someone else I, asked, uh, oh yeah, sorry. No, I, I didn't, uh, re I don't regret taking any courses, but I did very poorly in some of them. I remember in uh, chemistry, I got a D. Okay, I actually I don't think I failed any course, but but uh, but I got a D in chemistry, and uh, I think in the second chemistry, chemi the second semester of chemistry, and economics is a course that baffled and bored me, and I dropped it after three weeks. At that time, you could drop a course. Okay. You, you had to, there, this was an elective course and, and I took economics and I didn't, uh, it didn't speak to me at all and, uh, and I dropped it after three weeks. But regret? No, I didn't regret it. Uh, but, but I would want to talk about uh, some of the great courses at City College. Uh, 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 there was one geology course that I took in the summer and we met for three weeks, we sat in the classroom learning by heart the names of the rocks and not from books, from the rocks themselves. They had little pieces of rock. And we had an exam at the end of the three weeks where we had to identify, we got some rocks and we had to identify them. And the rest of the course, we never saw the inside of a building. It was all excursions in and around New York City, public transportation, no, no, no chartered buses or anything like that. Public transportation to the Bronx uh, Park and uh, across the Washington Bridge to New Jersey and all kinds of, of, of uh, excursions where we learned everything about geology, it was great. Yeah, I had the same experience, geology as a summer course. And I remember, <laughs> I remember Manhattan schist and igneous rocks and whatever. Yeah, that was great. Let's see, our, our, our chair, uh, Professor Pignataro, wanted to point out that the highest graduation awards that we give to math majors are named in honor of Post and Gill. And so we, we keep their names going. Uh, let's see, did any of you use that, those teaching methods like uh, Guild's and, uh, uh, and Post's Moore, version of the Moore method when you taught? I tried. In the, <laughs> when I was teaching at the University of Illinois, I tried it for a while and it was too painful I couldn't carry it on, so right. after a few weeks, I gave it up altogether. Well, in in uh, the way uh, the way uh, ele elementary calculus uh, math seven and eight were taught uh, was that uh, there was a homework assignment, problems from the textbook, and then. Uh, when you came in, you were you were called and told you should put such and such problem on the board. You didn't get to volunteer. They they told you that's how it was, and that's how uh, that's how the more advanced courses I remember math thirteen and fourteen, uh, advanced calculus and fifteen differential equations. 
I remember all the numbers. Math 11 was number theory. Yep, yep. Uh, Still in uh, uh, any case, uh, you were told uh, page 87, problem 14, and you walked, went to the board, write out your, wrote out your uh, solution, and then you got one after another, got to explain your solution to the class. When I taught calculus, I tried to do something like that, but I didn't dare, I didn't dare tell, I, I only did it to volunteer, to, uh, to people who would, I would ask who would do such and such problem, they would raise their hand and I picked that one. But I did use the same method of having them write their solution on the board and that explain it. I had the following uh, uh, interesting experience. I was uh, teaching calculus. There was one year I was at uh, University of California at Davis uh, when they just opened their liberal arts college there, but they, they, the calculus was agricultural engineering students. And I had this class that had one woman in it. And uh, she came up to me after class and explained that uh, she wouldn't be volunteering to put problems on the board because it would be too embarrassing or awkward for her to do it with all these boys in the audience. Hmm. Is Morton Davis here? Is it Morton? Uh, yeah, I think so. He, uh, that is to say, one of the participants who uh, was listening was Gloria Davis. And yeah. so I assume that that's, uh, uh, that she's just using her email to sort of sign in. So I, I think Mort is here. Uh, let's see if uh, down Thanks at the bottom. <laughs> I just, uh, I yeah. just want to. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, I ran up to the bathroom. Let's see. Show grid video. No. Okay. No, no. Oh, I, I don't see more up on the... Is he visible? I heard him, but... Uh, I, I can. I, I just want to make sure they're ready. Because <laughs> right. it will come on video, so... Okay. Yeah, if you can bring him up. Well, in the meantime, by the way, someone asked about Lee Lorch. Does anybody remember him? Yes. Oh, sure. Lee Lorch, right. When he finally came back to city to get an honorary degree, I was delegated to sort of take him around and, uh, uh, but he Does been... anybody here remember the name Harry Tarter? T-A-R-T-E-R. -E he was a, yes. he was in the, uh, Philosoph in the philosophy department. Yes, Tarta was that? still was still at City College when I was there, although I didn't take any courses with him. Yeah, he, I, I studied oh, Philo oh. 12 and Philo 13, which was mathematical logic with Tarta, and then we formed a uh, a friendship which which uh, lasted for 20 or 30 years. I mean, after I moved to Israel, he even, uh, even uh, visited us once in Israel and had a Seder in our house, Passover Seder, and, uh, uh, and we, we, uh, we ma maintained a, uh, a, a relationship, for, a friendship for, for many, many, many decades. Yeah, uh, Tara was the instructor of the advanced logic course I mentioned that my term paper was a <laughs> first draft. No, the other way. Just, the other way. Towards me. That's where I'm going. Yeah. Hi. Oh. I'm Mort. Mort. Yes. Hi. 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 How have you been? How have you been? I've been fine. Oh. Oh, it's know. great to see Bob, you again after Bob, you, uh, when's the last time we saw each other? Maybe 30, 40 years ago. Yes, yes. That's uh, wonderful. 
Yes, that was at Princeton, I think. Yes, and also in the Hebrew University, Jerusalem. Yeah. And Mort, I haven't seen you for a little over a year, thanks to uh, uh, COVID, but hello. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. By the way, uh, uh, Professor Chernoff, you're no r relation to uh, uh, Paul Chernoff, are you? There was a Paul Chernoff at Berkeley when I when I was there. Uh, no. No, no relation. He's one of the few Chernoffs in that one, one of my relatives. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, one of um, one of uh, uh, your students, except it seems to have passed off here. Um, uh, uh, Professor Davis and John Grant said that he was happy to be that you were he was you were his dissertation advisor and that he was happy to see you getting that award. Hmm. Uh, let's see, Grant. Grant, I think that was the name. Let me see. Yeah, no, that that's right. Right, right. I don't. Oh, and there, someone was asking. The graduations were held at Lewis and Lewis and Stadium in those days, weren't they? Yes, yeah, that's right. they were, but I didn't go to the graduation. Right, neither did I, actually. And <laughs> although it was still held in, at Lewis and. Oh yeah, someone was asking how many credits did you take in liberal arts? In addition to you know, sort of the math courses, there were a certain number of science courses you had to take, right? Oh, well, I uh, made a, a, a calculator decision to take anything I could, so I never counted them. I took more than necessary. And uh, I don't know how many I had in the liberal arts. Well, I had, uh, uh, I, I, I had three years of German uh, and uh, there were required courses in English literature, English composition, uh, all kinds of stuff. There was a required philosophy course in logic and scientific method, which I was required to take and which actually I taught during the, uh, uh, the, sum on the summer session a uh, year after I graduated. I I taught that course in the philosophy department. I had one. Uh, I, I I I had one Afro-American student in that, in that. I have class of about thirty students. Wow. The uh, oh yeah. Were you folks required to take mechanical drawing? Yes. Right, because that requirement ended shortly before I arrived at City, which is the reason that my drawings are so much worse than the people who are a little bit older than I was, <laughs> because I never had to take it. Yeah, I didn't have to take it because the requirement was waived during the war. Ah. I had taken it in high school, <laughs> and I found that it was a requirement in college. I, I don't remember that requirement. Yeah, and the uh, all kinds of courses. Public speaking was a requirement. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was a course in public speaking. I took a course in film, and a course in uh, German literature, and a course in bacteriology, and a course in art. And uh, yeah, I, I like the hands-on atmosphere in all these courses. Yeah, and art. They showed us pictures of, of, of paintings and sculptures, and and uh, and in uh, music they played the uh, the gramophone. <laughs> uh, it, it was uh, it wasn't theory; it was uh, it was hands on. Record playing. Let's see, my colleague uh, uh, Shashendo Chatterjee is asking if uh, there were. Uh, much in the way of interaction between the math and physics students back then, because statistics was relatively new then. Oh, I uh, I was a physics minor, ah. and uh, I spent a couple of years as a junior physicist at Dalman, Virginia. The the uh, the proving ground for the Navy. Ah. 
Yeah, I was a physics minor too, but uh, there was there was no social interaction with the physics students. I was a physics minor, and one of my best friends was David Finkelstein, who became a prominent physicist. Let's see, uh, another colleague, uh, uh, Aslan Amara, Amara Singham, uh, uh, says that uh, for Dr. Chernoff, Stuart German was his PhD advisor. So that makes you uh, his academic grandson, Professor Chernoff. Do you remember him? Who is my academic grandson? No, no, uh, his name is Professor is Amara Singham. But the, uh, so his advisor was Stuart German. Oh, Stuart Gaiman, yeah. Right. Oh, Gaiman, I misread it, sorry. Yeah. And he also sends his, uh... and by the way, what do all of you think about the trend of computer simulation versus looking for closed form solutions to math problems? Someone asked. Are, are you asking me or, uh, or anyone? <laughs> uh, well, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. They're, they're, both, job, they're both valuable depending on the purpose. Right. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> my colleague, Professor Bach, wants to know if. Uh, Dr. Allman changed his attitude toward economics since the Nobel Prize he got was in economics. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess I did, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay, it took a few years, but finally uh, I changed my attitude and I, I, I dropped economics in 1948. And I picked it up in 19, uh, um, 1957, 58, uh, 10 years later. 10 years later, after dropping it, I picked it up again. Right. <laughs> yeah. the, uh... Well, Arrow got his uh, PhD, uh, his uh, doctorate in economics, and he got the Nobel Prize in economics. But he was a grad. He was an undergraduate at City College. Kenneth. Right. Who was that? Oh, Kenneth, Kenneth Arrow. Arrow, yeah. Arrow was a very, very good friend of mine. We were very good friends. I got to know him in the sixties, uh, early, late sixties, early seventies, and and we remained good friends until he died. He ran, he ran uh, uh, the uh, summer school in economic theory uh, here at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Every uh, summer we have a week and a half of economic theory at the Institute for Advanced Studies here. And he, he ran it, but I knew him way before also and, and, and afterwards after he resigned from that position also. So we were very good friends. And he was in the 1938 uh, picture of the uh, math club at City College. Yeah. Oh, Mark hey, Brown, hey. who was asked if you use slide rules. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was paid during the summer to uh, uh, you know, to check the answers in a slide rule book that uh, a guy at Los Angeles City College uh, 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 was uh, was writing. Hmm. That was the, my last experience with slide rules. <laughs> Although my father checked them on a facet calculator, a mechanical calculator. So it looks like we're running out of questions here. So does anybody else have any comments or? Well, that was, that was fantastic. Um, and Dr. Egan, thank you so much for, for skillfully moderating. 
Um, Dr. Dr. Morton Davis, we're glad you could uh, could come in and join us. We are gonna we're gonna wrap up. Uh, I just I wanted, wanted to say, in case you didn't know, Professor Davis is retired from City. He was at City. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> so. So thanks everyone for attending. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we've recorded it. We'll share that recording with other folks that, that uh, registered. And if you wanna share this with any family and friends, you can feel free to do so. So I'm gonna thank all of our attendees, release them to their two o'clock meetings <laughs> and wish everybody a very good day and happy Earth Day. It is Earth Day. Ah, right. <laughs> So we can leave it open. For example, if Mort wants to, yeah, I thought you yeah. want to chat with Mort and so forth. <laughs> right. We'll let folks sign out and then. Right. We'll stop recording and and then. Right. We can. Okay.